Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So happy to be here with you. I have an amazing show. Uh, I'm really excited. I have um, a really uh, amazing person, uh, Perry Edwards Shake Straighten. Um, I think you guys probably know her from winning a gold, a silver, and a bronze. She won the gold in the 400 meter. She's an incredible athlete. Um, she's a rock star in her personal life and also um, in the sports world. Um, she's doing some amazing things right now, and she's got a special gift that she's going to share with us. So can't wait to have her on. Um, she'll be on in a few minutes, but um, I just did want to take a few minutes to talk about a few things that are happening right now with our country. And I have a smile on my face, but my heart is broken. I, I am so, so sorry for the pain and the anger and the frustration that so many people are feeling over this unnecessary act of violence. Um, it is so unacceptable. Um, what happened to George Floyd and the racism in this country has gotten out of control and we have to come together in a peaceful way and state how we feel and protest in a positive manner. I understand the extreme, extreme sadness and anger that you're feeling, but looting and destroying property and hurting other people, it's just mass destruction. And it's just gonna lead to more of the same. It's never gonna solve the problem. It's only gonna make it worse. And to think of all the pain that we have felt these past four or five months with this pandemic crisis, and we're all trying to survive on one level or another, and all of these amazing small businesses that work so hard made all these entrepreneurial strides are now being destroyed because of anger. It's pointless. It's not going to solve anything. And we really need to make amends and try so hard to come together in a peaceful manner. That's what it is. Power of the people to come together, to be united, to be as one and come together so that we can make a difference. But when you bring violence and fear and negativity into it, it's never going to work. So I can just ask, ask with all my heart and soul, yes, you have every right to feel the way you feel and things must change and we are behind you, but we have to go about it in a different manner. You know, I was listening to Trevor Noah give really just incredible passionate speech about Floyd's killing. And it made me step back and really think about things and put myself in all of these people's shoes. He said something like, think about the absolute, you know, rage and unease that we felt watching um, all of these people target and loot our businesses and our cities that we love so much. But try to imagine how it must feel for Black Americans when they watch themselves being looted every single day. And, you know, I really stepped back and thought about that. It really hit hard. It has to be a horrible, a horrible feeling to feel such deceit and to have a contract with all of these people that are supposed to protect us. And then we go out and do something like this. I'm so sorry for, for your loss and I'm sorry for your pain. And I promise you, there are so many Americans that want positive change and we want to see this stop and it will be, and it has to be if we could just be peaceful about it. I think with all of this happening and everything that's happened to us this past year, I think we all need to step back and take ourselves out of our own personal opinions out of the picture and think about who we want to be the president of the United States. Who do we want to be our leader for all the right reasons? We want someone to be integrity-based, someone to care about all human rights, every single race, every single person on this planet has a right to be happy and live a prosperous, peaceful life. We need someone who is strong to the core,
has strong values. I'm not going to get into politics with you because everybody has their own opinion about who they want to be president. But I think more now, more than ever, please step back and think about who you want to be up at the top making these decisions, stopping the racism, stopping this madness. It's not working right now. It's not. And the direction we're heading in is a danger zone. So I just ask all of you, let's please try to unite together. Power of the people means all of us coming together and working towards the same goal. I'm sending so much love to you. Please reach out to me, Amy Hart Live, at my Instagram, my Twitter, my YouTube. I want to hear what you have to say. Every single person in this universe has the right to speak their mind. But please try to do it in a positive, peaceful way. Even if you're in pain, destruction, fear, and hate only create more. Okay, you guys, I'm sending you a lot of love. Um, I'm going to take a quick break here and come back, and I'm going to have my very special guest, Perry, on. Thanks so much. I am asking you to go to Amy Hart Couture, www.amyhartcouture.com, and check out my new line that's coming out, my new spring line, which actually is summer now, is coming out in about two weeks. I'm very honored and excited to introduce it to you. My line is inspired by vegan leather. Um, I've always wanted to create a beautiful, luxurious caftans and beach suits and dresses for women to feel good about themselves, but also feel good about what they're wearing, knowing that they have another option besides using animal products. Mine are exclusively vegan, made from the most beautiful fabrics, most beautiful leathers made out of cork and pineapple and wine, and not one animal had to be hurt during the process. So thank you so much for checking me out. Remember, Amy heart control. I have a great guest today. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Perry when I went to my meeting with uh, Cash and Rocket. Um, it was a tour that we were supposed to be doing in Europe this summer and um, it was supporting the Helen Bomber Foundation which was helping young girls who are involved in the sex trafficking which is a, which is a horrible thing that goes on. And if you do your research, you know that these girls need help and they need support. And um, this is a beautiful foundation. So unfortunately, Cash and Rocket has been canceled this year, but we will be back on board next summer, early summer, and raising money now continuously throughout the year. Hi, Perry. Hi, uh, Amy. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. I mean, it gets a bit boring at times being locked inside. But, I mean, I'm chilling and catching up with movies and just speaking to my family on FaceTime. <laughs> yeah. What's happening in London? Because I'm in New York, so we're like, we're still locked down, shut down 100%. What about you um, guys? Okay, so we are pretty much locked down. Um, we got some new regulations uh, yesterday. But, um, so there's a slogan called stay home, but now it's like... Um, stay aware or something that's like new slogan but people still have to stay in their houses if you want if you can't work from home they're allowing you to go into work but don't take london transport which is weird because some people in london that's how a lot of people get around so and if you do decide to take transport you have to wear a mask but people okay. are still really being very cautious yeah and i can I'm imagine Oh, I know. I mean, it's like, even if you've quarantined, what does that really mean? Because once you go out again, then you're, you know, right. you're sort of being around people exposed. So then what are you supposed to quarantine every time you go out? It's very confusing. And what to know. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. Are, are the restaurants still closed and everything? Like you can't dine yeah. inside? Okay. Okay. So you can't dine, in, dine inside. Um, but a lot of um, restaurants are open, like fast food chains have opened up and they're offering like... Um, deliveries um okay. yes and but yeah that social distance is still pretty much going strong i know and you know what i usually come to europe for the summers because i love being in europe but i i don't think that's gonna happen this year but let's wait and see maybe everything will clear up a little bit you never know yeah i mean i think it will take a time for everyone to, to things to go back to normal and maybe it may be the case that 
this might have to be our normal, you know? I know. For a long time. Yeah. <laughs> What if, what if, I mean, it's not going to go away until we get a vaccine. I know that for sure. Exactly. So we have to, we have to sort of adjust to it and come to terms with it. But through all of this craziness, what a beautiful little blessing and gift you have. Yes. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I, it's, I hope it's okay for me to say, because I know you announced it on social media. Yeah, but that's you're fine. pregnant. Yes. So I'm 22 weeks at the moment, actually. And um, I think being in this lockdown is actually like a good thing because I'm getting a lot of rest time but yeah. then it does get a bit boring because I'd just like to be around my family um oh, no. but it's my first child so I'm very much looking forward to it and um, I think Amy that means I have no excuse to not be planning well because I've got time <laughs> to get things together you know you I know, but you know what, like for the first month, I feel like it was like, we're all trying to adjust what we're supposed to do. Are we supposed to just continue with what we're our work? Are we supposed to just spend time with family? You know, it's hard to adjust. I started my podcast again, which is amazing because I forgot how much I missed it. And oh, then I started okay. interacting with friends and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to see what happens with this. Whoop, I lost you again. There you are. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's, it's an adjustment, but that's amazing. I'm so happy for you. When is your due date? September, September, September. I honestly have so many friends that are pregnant right now. I think it's, I think it's beautiful and you're right. <laughs> they, it's crazy. Like, I have a These lot of babies friends. are going to be little fighters though. Okay. Right. You're going to have, yeah, very special. They're born in And I've been taking time. a lot of photos of like, of the situation, like trying to get photos of me in masks so they can understand what was going on when they was inside. Because I said, this is not normal. We don't usually walk around with masks around, you know, our mouths and stuff. So I think it's really important to document what's actually happening during this time so we can tell the story. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's incredible that you're doing that. So so you have all this time on your hands. Um, your your husband, <laughs> who you've been with for how many years now, Mike? Oh, God, four years. Four years. Okay, so he's been an incredible support system for you through this, through your career. I, I see yes. some of the things you guys have done together. You have a really cute relationship. It's nice. Thank you. Yeah, so he's with me, keeping me company during this time. He's actually, it's funny you said that, Amy, you, you've got onto your podcast again. So definitely during this time, it's like, we've discovered things and skills that we may have wanted to do but we've not had the time yeah. so my husband's picked up the camera so he's now turned into our professional to our personal professional photographer which has really? been great yeah <laughs> that's amazing yeah. it is it makes you think about things like you're right that you might have had back in your mind but you're like I have no time to get done this done or try this again so it's like bringing up your creative energy yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. So what are you, so right now, what are you doing with your time? Are you just resting and zoning, zoning into mom, being a mom? Or yeah. Mom? Yeah. Cause, Cause remember I've, I've come back from, I've come from a, a very active lifestyle in terms yes. of being a full-time athlete. So chilling was a part of being an athlete, but not as much as this. I'm, I'm, I'm always on the go. That's how my life life has always been but I've yeah. had to learn now to just chill relax um and take care of myself not to stress about things yeah and uh, that's exactly what I've been doing during this time Amy yeah because so I'm, I'm always on the go I'm always on the go <laughs> I know <laughs> and it's me definitely too changed. I understand how you feel and I remember when I go to London it was like boom 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 like we never stopped when we were there but it's, you have to learn to quiet your mind and to calm, be in a calm Zen place, which is not a normal thing for us probably because we're always so busy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? So what exactly. do you, so the Olympics, the, the 2020 Olympics, I mean, everything's been canceled, but gosh, I was thinking about what a disappointment that must be for all of those athletes that have been training so hard. And like, what is your take on all that? Are they, how are they dealing so with that? I mean, when the, initially, when they'd ever announced that it was being cancelled, Amy, I really did feel, feel for the athletes because I know I'm very much goal-driven. So to not have something on the calendar and knowing if it was happening or not for certain, it was, it's actually playing on your mental. 
So obviously they made the announcement that it's been cancelled or it's been postponed, shall I say, to next year. And that does mess up people's plans. However, you know, um, it gives the athletes more time. But then there's different cases for different individuals. For instance, some athletes after the Olympics, they may decide to retire. Now that's that's delayed now until next year because some people may want to start families. And that's going right. to now be delayed because being a sports person, your life is evolved around the sport, you know, and the calendar. So now that's all, that all gets changed. And for some athletes, it's a benefit, especially if you come back from injury or if, if you're a new mum and you're returning back, you've got more time. So different people I know are having different experiences. Um, and uh, I mean, I guess the bright side of it is still happening, but it's happening a year after. So you've got more time to prepare. That's true. So will it just, it'll happen a year after and will the same athletes be in the same positions they were before? And Well, and we don't know, Amy. Yeah. You know, sports is a funny thing. Anything can happen, you know. Some athletes will be ready, would, would have been ready for the 2020 and then some may not be ready, you know. It's just like, we don't, you know, <laughs> people like, 2020 is my year. But who knows? you got to go with the flow right now. Yeah, yeah you know, and I they just, had to make that they had to make that decision because how can like some some athletes were at a disadvantage amy because their laws in their country were different and it's like some athletes were trained and some weren't it's like wait hold on a minute how are we expecting to get the performances out of the right. athletes but like if everyone's yeah got different rules and regulations so it was the right thing to do it was the right thing to do and think about i mean it's crazy to think all sports no sports this summer, I mean, like, my husband and I own a baseball team, so we're like, wait a minute, a summer without baseball? It's just so strange to be able to adjust to that. Right. And I'm noticing what they're doing is, I don't know about television in, in New York, but there's a lot of, like, repeats yes. being played. You know? <laughs> it's like, know. Um, well, I think it's, it's a like a familiar thing. feeling, too. Like, if you have, like, a football game on or, or you know, NBA, NFL, NHL, something like that, or even soccer, football. Like, you, it's like a yeah. feeling you get. And I think they're trying to make sure the momentum that, continues. Yeah. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so I'm, I met you, was it September? Yeah, it was back in September. We were at the Cash and Rocket um, meeting, and that was so amazing. And obviously, I was hoping maybe they would do that in October, but they got canceled as well. Yeah. We, I'm sorry to hear that, but but it makes sense. We're not going to be driving through Italy probably anytime soon this year, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your first year doing that? Cash first market? year. First year, Amy. Yes, I was approached um, by Julie. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was like, wow, this sounds right up my street. For one, I love driving. I love a fast car. Then the great thing is this is for charity. And yeah. then meeting the ladies like, you know, yourself, like you all are all amazing and you all do some great things. It's like I was coming out of retirement, out of um, being a professional athlete. And then I was being exposed to like what you wonderful ladies were doing. I was like, wow, you know, this is the connection. It was really good networking. And to think now we met in September and now I'm talking with you, and you know, having discussion. And it's, it was re it's really cool because I know you mentioned – um, Judy mentioned this is one person you need to speak to. You need to speak to Amy. Da, 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 da. She's in, you have an interest in the entertainment, into the um, television, and there now I'm speaking to you. So it's, it's yeah. really good. I, you yeah. know, one thing, when I, the same thing when they asked me to do the Cash Market, I was like, oh, like such amazing women from around the world coming together for such a great cause and networking. I was like, I'm in for sure. And then we met yeah. some other girls. Same thing. It was incredible. And I know you want to, you totally want to get into this too. And I mean, like your background, your career is incredible. Um, and you could do anything you want. <laughs> and right. I know people love to talk to you. Yeah. Yes. Because of your experience. <laughs> I mean, so, so let's talk about your career a little bit. I know you've talked about it, you know, tons of times, but for some of my viewers, I mean, I don't even know where to start. So I think the best thing to do is just talk about some of the major highlights in your career, like winning them, you know, you've won silver, you've won bronze, you won gold. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, okay. So uh, my highlight I've always said was, is being at the Olympic games in my hometown in London. And for a start, I never aspired to be an Olympic athlete. That was not the case. No, okay. not at all. You know, my, <laughs> I still 
um, studied, went to university, studied sports science. However, um, sport kind of found me and I realised I was really good at it. And along the way, I realised I could make a career out of it. And I mean, you know, so everyone's like, what about the medals and stuff? Even though I didn't win a medal at the Olympics, this still meant a lot to me. Of Calling course. yourself an Olympian, you're at the highest of levels, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's a great thing. But I mean, <laughs> one year that really stuck stuck out to me was 2013. This right. was the year I actually got injured. But prior to that, early on in the year, I managed to get two gold medals at the European Championships in the 400 meters. So my background was a 400 meter hurdle. So to actually get a medal in the four, another event was like. I surprised myself and I think I surprised a lot of people as well. So that definitely, when I look at that medal, I just smile to myself and uh, I've had some great times. I really have. I've been an athlete. I've got bronze medals at Europeans, um, a silver. And you know what? When you don't get the gold, it's something for you to aim for. Right. Because I think you can, can people, athletes can sometimes may get complacent. But remember, there's someone always going to be behind you who's going to want to take your spot. So, so you know, I think the gold was came at the end of it after getting my my bronze and my silver medals. So, yeah. So what do you do when you? Because I want to go back to the injury. So you're, you know, you're you you got momentum. You're fighting for that gold. You know what you want. You're determined, and you have an injury. What What do you do to pick yourself back up at that moment? Like, how? Do I mean, you it feel was from it's, that. It's a. It was a really hard time. I'm not gonna lie. It was really dark because it was like. I, something had been taken away from me, you know. I need my legs in order to do what I need to do. And during that time, um, I really had to really try and stay positive. And that by doing that, I used to surround myself with family and friends because yeah. the darkest times when you're by yourself at night time and you're thinking, thinking, and it's just like you're just thinking too deep. And I had to realize, let's just be happy with the progress that you've made Perry instead of thinking oh what you can't do and that is how I can't that is how I really got through it plus going through my injury I'd known of other athletes who had injured themselves like really bad and they had returned back to the track so that also that gave me that fight and being a competitive person that I am I was like if they can do I can do it (laughs) so yeah that's how that was my mentality you have to have that, it's, but it's not only physical, it's mental. You have to talk, like you said, you have to talk yourself back into, like, I'm, I'm going to yeah. do this no matter what, because I'm sure there's a lot of things going on on the outside too. People are t- talking, like, is she going to make it? There, there's doubt going around you a lot, right? Yes. So you just, like, surround yourself with a good tribe, people that are going to support right. you. Right, around the people who believe in you, because there are people who, like really you know like you say all them doubters but you don't need to be around them doubters yes I'm aware of them but you cannot absorb it and take it in too much because that can just really ruin you absolutely so there was a quote that you did I'm going to read it really quick it was I like people talking about me it means I must be doing something right now I have to live up to the hype because hype is pointless if you don't live up to it so I just felt like that was very that was really empowering because it was like you know what's happening around you you know what you need to do watch me because I'm gonna do it and I love that right (laughs) yes and that that is that is a self-confidence thing Amy you have Mm -hmm. to have that you have to believe in yourself yeah you may have a team Mm -hmm. or whoever who believe in you but you the person who has to perform has to believe in themselves and that was my thing and I would say to myself at the start line I look good, I yes. feel good, and I'm going to perform good. I yeah. want to put on a show for everybody, and that is, yeah, I let the running do the talking. <laughs> you did, and you did it. <laughs> um, what, what advice would you give um, to young girls like that are starting out in this sport? Because it's, it's not easy, and there's so much competition, and like, how, how do you have that fire in your belly to keep going? The advice I would give to me, whether it be a young my younger self or to a young child um would be you know you have to enjoy it you have to love it you know no one pushed me into being a sports person yeah you know you want to you have to put that time and effort into it and it's a gradual process as you get older you get stronger and get wiser so be patient with it 
patient with yourself. So now that you've, you're kind of, well, let's go on to something that you did most recent, which I thought was amazing. You did dancing on ice. Now, did you know how to ice skate? Okay, I'll be on to you, Amy. So when I was when I was younger, I used to go like <laughs> I'm, I come from a very active background, okay, okay, with my family. And on a weekend, we'd go ice skating, but I wouldn't say I would. I was really good. I knew how to go forward. That was about <laughs> it, and stay and stay upright on the ice. So, I mean, I got to go on the show in 2018, I believe, right, and. Yes. Why I wanted to do it was obviously, yes, I'd returned back from an injury. I'd returned back from an injury in 2017. I'm a come, I call myself the comeback queen because I get knocked down and I come back. And I thought, yeah, ice skating is very dangerous, but I'm never afraid to try new things. Right. And given right. that opportunity, I had to go through a process, you know, like an audition. And I, the fact that I got through, I was like, yeah, this is great. And I picked up a skill. So now I know to go backwards. <laughs> I know how to do like uh, crossovers and stuff and I just love that it was a different world I was got to be all glamorous I'm I so impressed outfits, big hair yeah. oh I love it <laughs> I mean dancing with the stars is one thing but you da dancing on the ice you have to learn how to I ice know. skate then you have to have talent then you have to look good I'm like I would have oh, been right? like, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy but it was very much enjoyable did you train tons for that? Like, was that like hours yes. and hours of training? So I was yeah. training, I was doing that as well as training to be, be for the athletics as well. So, well, I mean, I used to train, do athletics training first. So that was two hours. Right. Followed by a three hour session on the ice. Wow. So it was so tough. Yeah. It was really tough. And I had to, you know what was keeping my energies up? Food. Yeah, just food kind of was the carbs, food. food. Yeah, <laughs> that's wow. what kept me. Yeah, that's amazing. And, uh, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I, I, I just, I'm impressed. <laughs> so, wow. so then, then, so you decided to retire. And so, what, what is your, what is your motivation today? I mean, obviously, you're having a baby and you want to be a mom. Yeah, and that's a beautiful experience because you sort of shift when you go into that that place. Um, mm. but what do you, what, what do you really want to do? If you had your heart set on one thing and you want to create something new for the future, what would it be? <laughs> I'd love yes. to have my own show, Amy. I yeah. would love to have my own show, Girl, but TV, <laughs> I love being in front of the camera. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I have a personality without even trying. I'm just myself. And yeah. what can, you can't beat just being real, you know? So I would love that. And I think my drive will definitely come from being a mum. Uh, I hear all these great things. You never know how strong you are until yeah, strong is the only option, you know? So yeah, yeah that will be something I will definitely want to look into. I can understand that. I've been trying actually to get pregnant for a while too. So I'm on, I'm on that road with you. And I know that it's okay. gonna be after you've accomplished so many things in your life, like, you know, that's an important part of it. It's an important yeah. part of, of who you are and what you want to be. And you know what you were talking about being real and authentic, genuine, like right now, I feel like with the COVID too, it's given us an opportunity to, to do these sort of things and everybody's sort of on an even playing field because you don't have yeah. any choice. So you see CNN reporters in their basements with, you know, hoodies talking. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. I think it's given everyone a perspective that being yourself is the best way to be. Best and just, way. Exactly. Yeah. And being and confident. Like, we're all, right. And we're all going through the same thing. Yeah. We're all going through exactly. something similar. And it's just like, um, you know, having these conversations, doing the video calls, it's like, oh, you know, similar. Everyone's at home. You know, we've got to eat. We've all got to sleep. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's just like we've all got to find that motivation to, to want to get up because you don't know what the next day holds. I know. Exactly. I think it's a really good place to be. Well, I think that your career has, has just been phenomenal. And I, I really look forward to hopefully next year driving with you and catching yes. rocket and and you know moving forward to raise money for an incredible cause and like all these great women i can't wait for it okay perry well i'm so happy to have you on today um i i'm so excited for you guys for the new baby keep me posted on what's happening 
Where can we find you on your social media so we can see what you're doing for the future? Okay, so you can find me on IG, and that's at it's PSD. And you can find me on Twitter, which is at Shakes Drayton. And you can find me on YouTube, a new YouTube channel, Mike <laughs> and Perry. Amazing. Oh, so what, what are you doing with your YouTube channel? You guys just, are you having different, is it a show that you're doing? Pretty much. We basically, okay. you know, we've, we've, that's where we decided to announce our news that we're expecting our first child. And we're just going to kind of keep the excitement and buzz and let people be coming on our journey. And uh, oh, usually I document it on my IG story, but I think it's right now it's great for a YouTube channel. We will tune into YouTube, and I can't wait to see you on TV because I know you're going to have your show and you're going to be amazing. Thank you, Amy. It was really great being on the show. Thank you for having me. A Parkville Media Production.